welcome all to our press conference and let me debrief you on the outcome of today's council. First, during breakfast, we welcomed the two new ministers of finance, Pierre Carlo Paduan for Italy and Andrei Babis for the Czech Republic. The usual debrief on the Eurogroup and the economic situation followed on the basis of the Commission's winter forecast. The Commission presented also its main findings of its in-depth reviews on macroeconomic imbalances in 17 member states. Furthermore, we were informed of the economic and financial aspects of developments regarding Ukraine. Moreover, finance ministers were debriefed by the Presidency and the Commission on the discussions and the outcome of the G20 finance ministers and central bank governors meeting held in Sydney on 22 and 23 of February. As you all know, discussions at the meeting focused on the global economy, economic growth, investment in infrastructure and SMEs, IMF reform, financial regulation and tax transparency. So G20 finance ministers endorsed a common reporting standard developed by the OECD for the automatic exchange of information. On the basis of a presidency issue paper, and the communication from the Commission, the Council held an exchange of views on the economic aspects of the EU's 2030 energy and climate framework in preparation of the European Council meeting on 20 and 21st of March. More specifically, discussion focused on the actions to be undertaken by Member States to achieve the policy targets, the means for promoting renewable energy, measures for addressing the energy price gap with the EU's economic competitors, and the completion of the internal energy market, as well as the impact of the proposed framework on growth and deployment, industrial competitiveness, and public finances. On the Savings Taxation Directive, I would like to highlight that this has been a priority of the Hellenic Presidency, as it is an important tool in the fight against tax fraud and tax evasion. In this regard, I am pleased to announce that today, thanks also to the constructive approach of our partners, we made a substantial step forward in that there was unanimous agreement that the formal adoption of the directive will take place at the next Council formation meeting following the confirmation of this political agreement at the March European Council in line with the mandate and timetable foreseen by, by our heads of state and government. Furthermore, under the other business, the Council took note of an ongoing work on financial services dossier. At this point, I would like to refer briefly to yesterday's macroeconomic dialogue at political level that took place in the margins of the ECOFIN, a constructive exchange of views with social partners, employers and trade unions at uh, EU level, as well as representatives of public enterprises and uh, SMEs, took place. The discussion focused on two issues. First, the appropriate policy responses conducive to sustained economic growth, given the positive economic outlook following a long period of contraction in economic activity, and B, the key funding channels that would help restoring lending to the real economy and particularly increasing the volume of credit available for SMEs in the short to medium term. Now, on the SRM, as you know, the presidency has put this issue on the top of its agenda as a key priority file. And as you know, this is a very difficult issue. We began our negotiations with the Parliament in trialogues in January on the basis of the general approach agreed by Council in December. All of you who followed those negotiations know very well how difficult it was to reach that general approach, which ultimately was a compromise. In our negotiations with the Parliament, it became clear that there were key aspects of the Council general approach with which the Parliament could not agree and its positions have been made public, so I will not go into the details of the Parliament's positions. At the same time, the general approach of December initiated an intergovernmental conference to draw up an intergovernmental agreement on the Single Resolution Fund, 
and this process has been moving in parallel with our negotiations on the SRM with the Parliament. Yesterday evening, we had another very fruitful round of the IGC process, which fed also into our discussions today on the SRM. This has worked well so far, as the two processes are interlinked and complementary. Today, and on the basis of our negotiations with Parliament so far, we submitted uh, to the Council our proposals as a basis for discussion on what we have identified as key issues that could facilitate in bringing us closer to reaching a common understanding with the Parliament. These proposals included the following issues. First, which institution will be the ultimate resolution authority, the so-called Meroni institution? B, who will determine whether an institution is failing or likely to fail? C, what types of decisions should be taken by the plenary session of the board and which by the executive in any individual resolution? D, the voting regime in the plenary session of the board. E, the loan facility, if any, or how to enhance um, the uh, finances of the single resolution fund. And finally, the contributions to the, SR, uh, to the SRF. Today's discussions in Council on all these issues were extensive difficult but constructive and we have arrived at a new updated mandate of the Council to the Presidency which allows us the necessary flexibility to go to trial tomorrow with the Parliament. I will not go into the details of this agreement. Suffice it to say that uh, I have decided personally to go to Strasbourg tomorrow with our negotiators to lead these negotiations and I have also invited uh, the chair of the IGC process, my dear colleague Jerome Dijsselbloem, to join me in this. And he, will, and he has accepted. And I think in this way we are very clear that uh, the Council is united and that both processes are going in the same direction. You mentioned that, um, that the manager gives you extra flexibility. Um, on the, the, the key point of the speed of mutualization, is there any additional flexibility there in terms of what, we've, um, what, what we saw in December? Well, as you know, the, uh, the, the IGC is not uh, part of the, uh, of the presidency's remit. Uh, uh, so you've heard last night Jeroen uh, made comments on it. Yes, I can tell you uh, that uh, there are certain ideas for speeding up. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Mark Papercorn here <coughs> for Scrum the Netherlands. I hope I can still persuade you to get a little bit into the details, which we've been waiting all so long for now. Mm -hmm. I mean, could you, you mentioned yourself the five or six points, which were, let's say, the, which, which um, are the gap between the council position and the parliament. Could you say maybe you need about which of the points you think uh, are they, can be dealt with now? Are you optimistic enough that a deal is possible tomorrow or the end of the week? Um, well, some of these answers would be really appreciated. Thanks. Well, I'm always uh, optimistic. Uh, you know, the negotiations uh, we had uh, to arrive at the general approach uh, have been difficult. Um, we, we came to an agreement last December. So today uh, we try to uh, take a new mandate so that we can converge somehow uh, with the positions of the parliament. In certain of the six elements, uh, we are more forthcoming. In certain others, uh, we're less forthcoming. Um, yes, I think uh, we have moved towards meeting the parliament's objectives to some extent. Excuse me. Hi there, Minister. Simon Marks from uh, Market News. Um, so you've mentioned that you know Greece does have a new mandate to go to the trilogue tomorrow and uh, negotiate with Parliament, um, but you can't tell us the finer details of, of that mandate. I mean, wh why is that? Is the is it is it is it? Are we just dressing this up today, or is there actually something substantive 
that we can get out of the, what this new mandate is all about. Thank you. Well, a negotiation is a negotiation. It cannot be, uh, it, it cannot be exposed and, uh, and uh, uh, developed uh, a priori. Uh, what what uh, I can tell you is that um, in, in all elements, um, uh, the intention is for the, for the process of the resolution to be more efficient, um, more rapid in the decision making, and at the end, uh, for the benefit of, uh, of the peoples of Europe. So this is the mandate we have, we have received today. Um, we are many, many member states. Uh, each member state has uh, uh, its own views. So we, we tried to put together all these, all these views uh, to form a new mandate. I mean, I cannot go into, into huge detail uh, at this moment. Hi. I'm Bauer, Lizico. Um, yesterday, Mr. Wren said that the Troika might end its work at the end of the week. Can you confirm that? Uh, or can you give us some kind of insight on this declaration of yesterday? Well, I can put the hat of the Greek finance minister now, uh, yeah. rather than the ECOFIN president. Yes, the Troika will come back uh, tomorrow, I think, and will continue work. Uh, with the aim to finalize as soon as, po as, as, soon as possible. There was, uh, um, there, there was an analysis of the process, uh, of, the, of the review so far, and uh, the uh, uh, mandate we have, uh, we have received is that uh, we should try to finalize the review uh, as soon as possible. Hi, uh, David Jolly, New York Times. Um, we know the parliament. We know the hi, sorry. We know the the parliament's position because they've made it uh, public, and we sort of know um, minister's position because we had the roundtable, uh, the public roundtable today. Considering that there seem to be some pretty strong, uh, clear lines drawn in the sand on the parliament side, and particularly um, with the Germans, maybe. There seems like there's a significant chance that uh, these talks are going to fail. Would, would you give a, an estimate for the probability of success here? Well, we, we, are, we are here um, to negotiate, to, to, to try to, to put together all the views, um, form a new one, uh, take a mandate, and negotiate with, with the parliament. Um, if, uh, uh, if, if I didn't believe in that, I wouldn't go tomorrow to Strasbourg. Uh, so I go there, um, having a new mandate, uh, try to, to negotiate with Jeroen, and, uh, and have a conclusion. Thank you very much, David Carretta, Radio Radicale, Italian Radio. Uh, uh, I don't understand why you are so afraid to give uh, details. Uh, you are in a uh, legislative procedure, so normally it's quite public. It should be public. Uh, we, we, we have heard some debates, not all the public debates. But uh, uh, And my second question, what if you don't find an agreement tomorrow with the parliament? Are you foreseeing a new ECOFIN meeting this week? No, I, I do not foresee a new ECOFIN meeting, and uh, the, uh, the the positions uh, the positions of the positions of the Greek presidency are, are known. They have been published, not all of them. So, so you know the uh, the position of the presidency in uh, all these uh, six issues because we we made it public, uh, if I remember well, few few days ago. Uh, so it's not a secret. The uh, positions of the presidency are not secret. Of course, not all of them have been accepted today. Uh, in certain others, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have compromised. This, this is the art of the negotiation. So um, you will find out soon. Thanks, Minister. Uh, from MLEX, John Riga. I know you can't give away a negotiating position, obviously, but if you uh, could elaborate at all on you know, what areas you see as maybe the most problematic tomorrow, that'd be helpful. But also, just as far as personal responsibilities between you and Minister Dijsselbloem, 
Um, who's speaking for, for which aspect of the, uh, of the talks? Thanks. Jeroen speaks on the uh, IGC, I speak on the SRM, on the SRM. So the, this is the division of labor um, among us. Yes, <coughs> constantly from TM News. At the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, um, it is uh, the political will which uh, will determine um, the conclusion of the negotiations, both uh, from the Council and the Parliament. And the Commission, of course. This is, I mean, we are, uh, this is why it, it is called a trialogue. The Commission has its own views, the Parliament has its own views, the Council has its own views. So that's what we, we, we try to, uh, to converge. Consul yeah. Italy, News, Italy. Um, two questions, Ministers, um, President. <laughs> one, one concerns this uh, issue. You said uh, we, uh, we try to uh, to have a convergent position, to have a mandate. But, uh, I mean, it looks like there is no real convergence on some of the, of the six points that you mentioned. Uh, how can you uh, go and negotiate with the parliament when you don't have actually a, a, a unique position from, from the council? That's, that's what I, it looks like, at least. Uh, and second, on, uh, on, on uh, taxation uh, directive, uh, if you understood well, we actually had an, uh, a breakthrough today because uh, it was clear that Luxembourg and Austria accept the, the automatic exchange of information uh, based on the OECD uh, uh, global standards. And so can we say that actually uh, there is a breakthrough, it's, not, it's only a, no, a nominal question if you want. Uh, the fact that uh, the, Council, the, the, Europe, the European Council will have to confirm this, but we have that already today, thanks. Well, on, on, on your first um, question, uh, yes, the, the Council arrived at a unique position. Of course, member states started with divergent views, but we discussed today uh, and we came to a new mandate. We arrived at a, at a single, at a unique position at the end of the day, uh, based on on the proposals of the Greek presidency and, of course, the work of the Commission and other member states. Um, we started with different views. We um, came to, to a unique position. So there is a unique position, and uh, this is framed in the new mandate we have uh, to go to the parliament and negotiate. Um, on the second question, yes, I think uh, it, it was an important um, uh, decision today. Well, it, it's not yet a decision. It's not. It has not been adopted yet. It will be uh, the new uh, taxation directive will be adopted after the uh, European Council. In the new in the in the new Council formation, after the the European Council. But uh, um, all ministers, all ministers, uh, have shown a willingness that this time will adopt uh, this directive after the efforts of, of many, many years. So yes, I, I think uh, uh, this is uh, substantial news. And one final question, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Alejandro Mato for the Spanish Media Capital Radio. Uh, the found, the ERAS SRM will go to the public markets to get credit, to get credit. Uh, could you say that if it's enough without the public guarantees that Germany doesn't allow? Um, well, the, uh, that, that's why today um, we, have, um, we have discussed uh, ways of how to, to enable um, the board to um, um, use uh, financial instruments uh, to enhance uh, the, the, the power of the board, of the fund. Um, it, it is true that many countries do not like public guarantees. Um, so we'll um, um, try to work with the available means we have. 